says he's so consumed with the celebrating, he's not paying attention to the count. And my God, my God, and God is coming to let us know today. Can we just turn, as you, if you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 27. And I'm going to read for your hearing. Verses 57 through 61. But keeping that in mind, that now, he's not paying attention to the count. The blow you've been dealt, yes, he's celebrating. He's celebrating your demise. He's celebrating you getting knocked down. He's celebrating you getting knocked out. And Satan is so busy and consumed with the celebration, he's not paying attention to the count. Matthew 27. If you have it, say amen. amen. If you don't, say hold on a moment. Amen. Once you have it, if you could just please just stand for the reading of God's word. All of you are able, just please stand for the reading of God's word. Amen. amen. Beginning in verse 57 of chapter 27 of Matthew, the word of God says, When the even was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. And there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulcher. And when you look at this, Jesus has now been laid in the sepulcher. You may be seated, and it just seems like at this point the final blow has been dealt. The final blow is dealt. That final blow that Satan throws out has finally been dealt. And it's now, they're saying, the Pharisees are saying, just like we were talking about, the Pharisees are thinking that it's over, we got rid of him. The religious leaders are thinking that it's over and that we got rid of him. The Romans and Pilate are thinking, now this troublemaker is put in the ground, maybe we can get back to business as usual. They're thinking it's over. Satan himself is now thinking it's over. And now some of us, it's the same way that there's some people that have been dealing us blows or have seen us take a blow, that they're standing over us just like Satan, probably standing over the body of Jesus in that match. And they're sitting there just like Satan, they're saying it's over, that I knew you wouldn't make it. See, there's some of us that have been dealt a blow, and they're sitting there, people are sitting there over us, and they're consumed in a celebration. They're saying, I knew you wouldn't make it. I knew you would not amount to anything. I knew your marriage would fail. I knew your kids wouldn't make it. I knew you would finally lose your mind. I knew that situation would break you. I knew that you would finally crack under the pressure. And they're so busy celebrating our demise that they haven't noticed the count. They haven't noticed that there is a count taking place. But it's a count not like they think. Because they're so consumed with the celebration that they don't notice that now that there is a count going on. And God has come to let somebody know in here today In the midst of those celebrating around you, the clock is ticking. In the midst of those even some clicking you while you're down, the clock is ticking. The count is on. The count has begun. And there is a count going on. It's not one, two, three, but it's ten, nine, eight. My God, God has come to let you know. Don't get discouraged. Don't be discouraged. It's not over because the clock is ticking on your situation. Tomb. The clock was ticking. My God, my 
God, that even as he was stretched out and the clean linens were put upon him and he was laid in the tomb, the clock was ticking. And it seemed like while he was in that tomb, it seemed like while he was sitting laid in the tomb, it seemed like there was a period of inactivity. But my God, my God, it seemed like there was a period of stillness, of quietness. There was no movement in the tomb. There was no activity in the tomb. It seemed like in the natural that there was just inactivity. But how many know that it may seem like in the natural there's, in, there's inactivity. But how many know there was activity going on in the spirit? That there were some things taking place in the spirit. Yes, on the outside, it seemed like inactivity was taking place. But in the spirit, there was activity all over heaven. There was activity all in the spirit realm. God was moving things into place. God was putting some things in position. In the midst of what you appeared, it appeared as inactivity. God's hand was moving. He was positioning some things here. He was moving some things there. He was shifting some things here. Yes, there was activity taking place in the spirit. God was moving some things into position. And that's just like with us out here. That it seems like right now, there's nothing going on. That the situation is not changing. That the things that are going on, it seems like nothing is changing around you. But God said, don't let that fool you. Yes, in the natural, it seems like inactivity. But there's activity going on in the spirit. God is moving on your behalf. God is sending angels to and fro. God is moving some things in position. God is touching some things. God is shifting some things. God is removing some things. God is adding some things. Yes, there's activity going on in the spirit. Hallelujah. Can you give God praise for the activity that is going on? You may not see it, but can you believe it? That there's activity going on in the spirit. Just like with Jesus, there seemed like that inactivity. But God was moving things in position for the resurrection of that place. That's what God wants you to know. That it seems like activity in activity. But God is saying, God is moving things into position. So your resurrection can come. So your deliverance can take place. So your blessing can take place. So the move of God can take place in your life. God is moving things into position. It says in Micah, you don't have to turn there. But that's one of my favorite scriptures. Because it seems like a lot of us or even now, it just feels like we're going through a situation and we're being kicked while we're down. We're being hit while we're down. But I love what it says in Micah 7, verses 7 and 8. Amen. It says, Rejoice not over me, my enemies. For when I fall, I shall rise. And as I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light unto me. So every time I read that scripture, that gets me excited because it shows me something. And I pray to God it shows you something. That when I look at that scripture, it shows me I'm not always going to be in this place. I'm not always going to be in this position. I'm not always going to be in this season. So you may rejoice, but don't get too comfortable in your rejoicing. Don't get too comfortable in your mocking. Don't get too comfortable in your don't get too comfortable in your gospel because I'm telling you right now, I may be here today, but tomorrow I will not be here. I may be here for a season, but the season's just about up, which tells me that I'm going to shift from one place to the next place. And as I sit in darkness, it looks like I'm in a dark place right now, but there's going to be a light that shows forth and will be the light of Christ. 
That just like Jesus, the enemy is celebrating your demise. But God has come to let you know today that this is not your eulogy, but this is your wake up call. This is not a eulogy. You are not stretched out. We're not preaching fire and not telling you. God said there's another chapter to your life. There's another season that I have for you to go in. This is not a eulogy. You are not dead. You are not out. You may have been down, but you're not out. You may have been down, but you're coming up. Just like Jesus, you're stepping out of this thing victorious. 